Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on Mathematics Great Health. In this platform, we shall be focusing uh, on the quadratic functions, that is the parabola, uh, some properties that we need to know on a parabola, and also we are given uh, an exponential function. So we've got two functions that we are going to combine them at once, a parabola and also an exponential. So the first part here we are given that the graph below shows the graphs of f of x, which is given as ax squared plus bx plus c, which is a quadratic. So this is our parabola here, a quadratic. Uh, we must know the format, and already this is the normal format that we know. And on this one, we have got an exponential uh, function, which is of uh, b to the exponent of x plus q. a and b are the x-intercepts, and e is the y-intercept, and c is the point negative 3, y is the turning point of f. All right, so we've got this equation of y is equal to 8, which is the equation of the asymptote of g. So take note, y is equal to negative, okay? And the value of y, it affects here the q here, that's your asymptote. So it actually represents uh, the asymptote. So which means we have the value of q here, which is a negative 8, all right? Then h is 1 minus 5 is one of the points of intersection of f and g. So take note, the point h is found on both f and g, like uh, what we see on this graph here. This is our point h here, which is one minus five and so forth. Then the c is our, our turning point here, where x is negative three over four, and we do not know the value of y here. All right, then the a and the b, these are the x-intercepts of what? Of f and e is the y-intercept of f. D is the y-intercept of G, which is the other function with the, the, uh, the exponential function. All right, so that was uh, actually the graph that we are given. Uh, so let's see the questions. The first part of the question was write down the coordinates of G, which is 5.1, write down the coordinates of D. All right, where do we have our D? D, it's a point, which is the y-intercept here at this point. And we know that in the y-axis, uh, x is equal to zero. This is your y-axis, x is equal to zero. In the x-axis, y is equal to zero, all right. But remember what I said here, I said, since y is equal to minus eight, it means we have the value of q from the asymptote uh, arrangement that we have. So which means we can play around with the gx. All right, let's see what we have on gx. So this is 5.1. We are given that our gx is equivalent to b, to the exponent of x plus q. And the q is the asymptote that we are given as negative eight. So we have the asymptote here, y is equal to negative eight. So which means we can actually substitute this as gx is equivalent to b to the exponent of x minus eight. All right. And uh, to find the value of uh, uh, the point d, we said uh, that's the y-intercept. All right. And at the y-intercept, x is equal to zero. We agreed that x is equal to zero at this point d was the y-intercept. So we are going to simply substitute the value of x, which is equal to zero here. And we, we know that any number, when it is raised to the exponent of zero, it gives us a one. So b to the exponent of zero, that's a one minus eight. One minus eight, which is negative seven. So the value of y at this point is negative seven, the value of x being as zero. So therefore the point D can be written as zero minus seven. All right, so it was uh, a little bit direct question, a little bit uh, confusing. If you didn't focus on that asymptote, it was going to be one of the uh, hardest questions because it was going to be very, very challenging to find that one. All right, anyways, on 5.2, they are now asking you to write down the value of Q. Okay, the value of Q, and that is just one mark. And already we, we have the value of q because we have substituted it here. If you still remember what we did here, we already substituted the value of q as negative eight. So 5.2, there's nothing. Q is just a negative eight, all right, which is the part of the asymptote. Okay, clear, 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 very clear. All right. Uh, let's check again on our function and the questions that we are given. Uh, we are now given that show that the values of a is 2 on 5.3, show that a is 2, b is 3, and c is negative 10. All right. Um, we are going to take back, okay, let me have our functions back here. We have our function of f of x 
uh, also that we are given, there's something that is happening. So this is 5.3. Remember, we have got our f of x as ax squared plus bx plus c, whereby we do not know the value of a, the value of b, the value of c. But there's something that is happening here. There is a b which is on gx. There is also a b which is on f of x. These two, they are equal. The b on f and the b on g, they are the same. If you see such a condition, that is what it means. All right. If they are different values, this way they were supposed to write maybe a c to the exponent of x or choose another letter. But once they use the same letter, it means that is the same value. That letter, yes, the same value. All right. So, so far we have got uh, f of x, which we do not know anything. Then back to gx, remember on gx, we did something. We now have it as b to the exponent of x minus eight. So that means uh, somehow we can find the value of b on g. Why? Why is that so? Okay, let's get back to our function. If we are to cross check on uh, g here, there is a point that we are given which passes through g, which is h, which is one minus five. That means at least we can play around that point. Never try to work with D because D is the one that you calculated from. So from that graph. So it means it's going to neutralize anything, everything. You're not going to find anything there. All right. So focus with the point H. All right. So using the point H, which is minus one five. So you say the point H is one negative five, where we are given the value of X and the value of Y. So we can substitute whatever that we have here to find the value of B. We have the value of Y being five, so which means GX is five when X is equal to one. So which means we shall have B to the exponent of one minus eight of which B to the exponent of one is B. So five is equal to B minus eight. So to find B, just transpose the negative eight to the other side due to add. So it's going to be five plus three. Okay, this is, Negative five. All right, this is negative five. Yeah, negative five, guys. So this is a negative five. All right, so we shall have negative five plus eight is equal to b. So b is equal to three. All right, negative five plus eight, that's three. Or you can even use your calculator, negative five plus eight, which is equal to three. All right, so we have the value of b, which is the same b as on f of x here. f of x is equivalent to a x squared plus b, which is now plus 3x plus c. All right. It's very, very difficult because we do not have these points a and b. We do not have, if we had these points a and b or any other point, we could have substituted those points. Then we formulate simultaneous equations. Then we solve. But what can we do? We can't say we are done because we do not have these two points. There is a point that we are given on F here, but this point is not complete. If you are to check here, previously we are given the turning point here at point C, which is uh, the turning point here at point uh, C, which is given as negative three over four Y, the one that is given here. That's our turning point, and we can play around that turning point. Okay, let's write it down and see how we can play around with the turning point. We are given that the turning point is at negative 3 over 4y, which means we are given the value of x at the turning point. And we know that at any turning point, guys, we know that at any turning point, x is equivalent to minus b over 2a. So that means we can play around the X value that we are given, which is minus three over four. So equating the minus three over four, which is the value of X to minus B over three, because now we have got the value of B here, which is three. So it is going to be minus three over two times A of which we need A. So it's going to be two A. So as you can see, it's an equation and we are just left with A. So that means we can solve for A from this equation. How can we solve for A? Definitely, we have to cross multiply. So you can cross multiply minus three by two, that's negative six A is equal to four by negative three, which is negative 12. So you can divide by negative six, both sides. So that means A can be equal to two. If we divide properly there, A is equal to two. All right, 
So back to our f of x. Now our f of x can be written as f of x is equal to, we have the value of a, which is two. So it's now two x squared plus three x plus c. Try by all means to substitute every information that you have determined or that you have from what you have calculated. It is going to help you guys. All right. Having the point, uh, having our f of x in this manner, it means we are just left to all obtaining the point C. So where are we going to have the point C? Uh, let's get back again. Uh, we do we have a point on F. There is a point F that we have here, which is H. H is a point which is a point of intersection of both F and G. So which means point H can work on F. It also can work on G. So let's utilize the point H because that one, we have that point and it can help us to calculate the missing value for C. So taking our point H, which is one negative five, we've got X and Y here. We can substitute the value of Y being uh, negative five. So negative five is equal to, in place of X, we're going to substitute two. So it's two by one squared. All right, two by one squared plus three by one plus C. So negative five is equal to one squared. That is one any number, if it, if it is one, one, one to the exponent of any number is one. So it's one times two, which is two, plus three times one, which is three, all right, plus C. So we can add here, which is five. So negative five is equal to five plus C. So to find C, just transpose the negative five to the other side, uh, the positive five here, it will be a negative five. So it's minus five, minus five, which is negative 10, that's C. So C is going to be equal to negative 10. All right, so we, we have the value of A, the value of B, the value of C. Do they match with the ones that we are supposed to show? All right, show that A is two, B is three, and C is negative 10. Yes, these are the possible values that we have. So which means uh, we are done and we can just have our F of X being rewritten uh, properly because maybe we shall have it later on. So I'm just gonna substitute the value of C that we got here, which is negative 10. We never know, maybe we might use this function again. All right, anyways, that was 5.3. 5.4, write down the range of G. All right, the range of G. This is our G here. But remember, if you are dealing with range, you are dealing with the values of Y. And as you can see from our G, our G, there is an asymptote here, which is at Y is equal to minus eight. And this graph cannot proceed from, from this value. Uh, y minus eight, it cannot go down or even reach minus eight. We are just having the values of Y which are above minus eight, not below minus eight. These values of Y that we have, they are on top of minus eight. So which means our Y is definitely greater than uh, negative eight. All right, so that is the range that you're going to have. So Y is greater than negative eight, and this y definitely is an element of all the a, uh, the real number that we are going to have. Uh, as long as we're dealing with uh, somebody that's going to be part of the solution. So it's because this is above minus eight, it can't go down. So when as long as you are dealing with uh, an exponential function, the asymptote can work to determine the range. All right, anyways, on 5.5, .5, we are given there is a line which is referred to as y plus 9x is equal to minus 28 is a tangent. All right, take note. This is a tangent to the of f. Okay, it's a tangent to f at a point t. Calculate the coordinates of t. Okay, there is a tangent here. Uh, whenever you are dealing with a tangent, there are two ways that you can actually have. Uh, I'm just going to show you what happens with a tangent. So this is actually 5.1, 5.2. Uh, let's say this is our f and this is our tangent here. A tangent, it, uh, it actually touches the curve. So where it touches the curve, that is the contact here. We are having a contact between a tangent and the function that we are given of f. So at the point of contact, definitely for us to find this, we are supposed to solve simultaneously the given equations. All right, we can solve uh, simultaneously the given equations. All right. Given equations. 
the given equations. That's the option that we can do. Or we must, or we can use this option that at any point of contact, as long as we are dealing with a tangent, it means that the first derivative of f at the given point is equal to m, which is the gradient. So this is the first derivative at the given point, at that given point, at that given point, all right, at that given point, they will be equal. The derivative of f and the gradient, which is m, they will be equal at that point. And uh, for me, that's the easiest way that uh, can, can work because we, we are just working with the derivatives here. All right, so what are we going to do? Remember our f of x here, we have our f of x, we simplified. Now our f of x is 2x squared plus 3x minus 10. All right, so I'm going to start by writing our f of x here. So we have our f of x as, you say that 2x squared uh, plus 3x minus 10. All right, then the straight line, which is the tangent now. All right, let's take our straight line, which is the tangent. The tangent is given here as y plus 9x is equal to negative 28. All right, so we have y plus 9x, which is equal to negative 28. All right, so let's see. y plus 9x is equivalent to negative 28. So here we need the first derivative and we need the tangent which with the gradient, which is m. m is the gradient. Take note, m represents the gradient. Okay, so the first derivative, with respect to x, what are we going to have? We have to differentiate here. That is two times two, which is four x plus, here we're just going to take three. Remember, this is just x, so we just take the value of uh, x, which is affecting three. Negative 10 is a constant, so that will give you a zero. So that's your first derivative here. Then here we need the gradient, which means we are supposed to rewrite this equation in form of y is equal to mx plus c, so that we can locate m which is a gradient. So definitely we are supposed to transpose uh, the nine X to the other side of the equation so that it can be a negative nine X. So it will be negative nine X, negative 28. So that means we have our M, the value that is affecting X, that's our gradient, which is negative nine. All right, but we see the first derivative is equal to M, which is the gradient. So we can formulate an equation by these two because the first derivative is there, it's 4x plus 3. So 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 9, which is m. So that's an equation. So 4x is equal to uh, 3 to the other side of the equation, definitely to be negative 3. So we've got negative 9, negative 3, which is negative 12, divide by 4, by 4, both sides. So x is equivalent to 3. So at that point of contact, x is equal to negative 3. For both functions, for both the tangent and for both the function of f. So it's an advantage because you can calculate the value of y by just substituting the value of x that you determine in any of the two. You can substitute in f of x, you obtain the same value. You can substitute in this equation, y is equal to negative 9x, negative 28, any part. So I'm just going to choose the easier one, which is the linear equation where negative nine and X is negative three, negative 28. So we can have the value of Y there. So we can just use our calculators here. That's negative nine times negative three in bracket minus 28, and that's minus one. So Y is equal to minus one. So X is equal to minus three, Y is equal to minus one. So therefore the point uh, where this meets, we are told the point, the name of the point is given as t. So here, uh, they intersect at a point t. So calculate the coordinates of the point t. So t is the point that we have calculated from the values of, uh, from the value of x and y that we had. So therefore, t is going to be x, which is negative three, and y, which is negative one. So that's our point t. So as you can see, guys, uh, that's how we can find the point of contact of a tangent to a curve. You can work with the derivative or you can use that part that I, I, I referred to where you can solve the given equations uh, simultaneously 
Yes, you can obtain the same value. Okay, let's see what I'm talking about. Uh, what I'm saying here, what I'm actually saying. All right, let's just hope this is going to allow us the space here. So I was actually saying that we can use this concept. At the point of contact, our F and the tangent, they will be the same. So in this case, our F of X is going to be equal to the tangent. So which was uh, actually equal to uh, 2X squared uh, plus 3X uh, negative 10. All right, so this is your F of X. Then uh, the, the, the tangent, what you're going to do for the tangent, you are going to take it this way uh, with this one, which we already written here as y well, is equal to negative 9x minus 28. So this is the one that you're going to use. All right, so there, y is equal to negative 9x negative 28. So at the point of intersection, these two, they are equal because it's not like uh, what we have, like a point of it, no. It's just a contact, but it's the same thing as that contact that we have, they will be equal. All right, so that means we are going to equate the y and the y, they will be equal, because this is the same as y, so y and y are equal. So definitely the remaining part of x will be equal, this part. All right, so we shall have 2x squared plus 3x minus 10 being equal to negative 9x, negative 28. So let's solve for x transpose to the left-hand side, all this part to the left-hand side. So 9x is going to be a positive, so it will be 2x squared. Uh, that's 9x and 3, which is a positive. So 3 plus 9, that's 12x. All right, negative 10 uh, plus 28. So this 28 is going to be a plus 28 here. So it's going to be for 18. All right, that's something like 18, which is equal to 0 there. Okay, well, we just use your calculator to cross check. Okay, so we now have a quadratic equation, but I can even reduce this equation by two, as I can see that two is common. So that would be x squared plus six x plus two into this, which is nine is equal to zero. So I can factorize and solve for x. All right, having the factors of x, which is x here, x here of x squared, then we focus with the constant term, which is nine. What are the factors of nine? But if we add, we must obtain positive three, positive six. So that's three and three. Okay, three times three, that's nine. Three plus three, that's six. So we put x plus three, x plus three here. So x is equivalent to negative three or x is equivalent to negative three. So we've got the same values of x, minus three, minus three. So uh, having the value of x, which is minus three, definitely we are going to substitute to find the value of y. But as you can see, our x here was minus three. So if you substitute, definitely your value of y is going to be minus one. You substitute into any one of the equations. So you shall obtain the same point, which is minus three, uh, minus one. So that was it for this particular question. As you can see, it was uh, a little bit direct and uh, we just have to work on much questions as I always say, revise much questions, guys. All right, let's check the other part of the question. All right. I you have to change to this side here. All right. So this is where we are on 5.6. Uh, given that hx is equivalent to gx plus 8, write down the inverse. Take note, we need the inverse here. The inverse of hx in the form of y is equal to. But we are given that this hx is equivalent to gx plus 8. So we have to find it. Okay. Remember your gx was uh, equivalent to, we worked out our GX. Remember, we ended up having something like this. Remember our B was three. So our GX was going to end up as, uh, it was B to the exponent of X and our B is three. So it's going to be three to the exponent of X minus eight. Remember that our GX. So now we are given that a new function, which is referred to as HX is equivalent to GX which is this g that we are referring. This is your gx, all right, which is three to the exponent of x minus eight plus eight. So we are going to add eight. So which means we have got our new hx, which is three to the exponent of x minus eight plus eight, that's a zero. But the question is not about you finding hx. No, it's about finding the inverse of hx. So how do you find the inverse, remember? Uh, for you to find the inverse, you're going to introduce y in place. You're going to just write up 
this in opposite manner in place of or, or, okay let me write it this the way it was supposed to be this is y is equal to three to the exponent of x if we write hx like that so what you do is that you interchange x and y okay you interchange these two letters so it means x is now equal to three to the exponent of y okay after interchanging then you are supposed to make y the subject of the formula so you're supposed to make y the subject or you transpose to make y the b the subject so uh, what can you do remember from your logarithms the logarithm of a in base of b is equal to c it can be written as a is equivalent to b to the exponent of c so in this case we can take this consideration we can see that our a in this case this is our a here this is our B and this is our C. So writing in this form, we shall have it in the form of log A, which is our A, it's X. In base B, our B is three, is equal to C. Our C in this case is Y. So Y is the subject. So Y is equal to log X base three. So actually the inverse of an exponential gives you a log. The inverse of a log gives you an exponential. Oh, there were so many ways that we could have done. Uh, we could have introduced the logs. Maybe you do not want to work this way. You can introduce the log here. Uh, at x is equal to three to the exponent of y. Just introduce log both sides. This is log here, this is log. So the moment you introduce log, we shall have log x is equal to you drop the exponent from your laws of logarithms. That's why log three. So you have to divide by log three both sides by log three both sides. So this can cancel. So y is equal to log x over log three. And from your laws of logarithm, the log of a over the logarithm of b is the same as the logarithm of a in base of b. So that means here y can be written as the logarithm of x in base of three since we are dividing logarithms. So that's it. We have the same answers uh, either way. Uh, let's check the other part of the question. We are now given that if, uh, given that Px, it's a, now, a, 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 it's a new statement that we are given, uh, Px is equivalent to f of x plus one, determine the values of x for which x times Px is less than zero, okay. Take note of what we are given in this case, guys. I want you to take note of what you are given. You are given that Px is equivalent to f of x plus one. And your f of x, we had our f of x here. If we are to consider, this is our f of x, which is two x squared minus three x, uh, plus three x minus 10. All right, that's our f of x. So now we are given that on 5.7, all right, or oh, let me just do this. Let me just remove this part here. All right, let me just remove this part. Instead, I see yeah, a lot. All right, so we are given on 5.7 that Px is a new expression, which is f of x plus one. And f of x, we have it as two x squared plus three x minus 10. This is our f of x, but we are going to add a one. So it's going to be plus one. This is a, a new expression for Px. So Px is equivalent to x squared, plus three x, uh, this will be a negative nine, okay? So the question is, for which values of x is x times px less than zero? So it means x by px, which is two x squared plus three x minus nine is less than zero. That is what it means. So definitely all you need is to find the critical values by solving the equations. So your x is going to be zero from the zero concept. This part is equal to zero. Or the other part, which is the quadratic equation, should be equal to zero. Two x squared plus three x minus nine is equal to zero. You solve for x here. So you're going to solve either by quadratic formula or by factorization. I don't know which method are you going to obtain. But by solving here, we shall have two possible values of x, which is three over two or another x, which is equivalent to negative three. Okay, I think I talked about quadratic formula factorization. So guys, I think now we are used to that. All right, so these are the possible values of x that you're going to have, but which one is going to be part of the solution when this is less than zero? Uh, so what you're going to do, you have to test your values from negative three uh, up to two. So we are, we are going to have something like this on your 
number line. Okay, you can just have your number line here. This is negative three. This is zero here. This is three over two. All right, so what you do is that you're going to test your values from uh, negative three. These values to this side, they are actually less than negative three. Then from negative three to, to zero here, these values, they are actually greater than negative three, but less than zero. Then from zero to three, these values, they are greater than zero, but less than three over two. Then from three over two, these values, they are greater than three over two. So what I want you to do is to substitute any value in this region. You can substitute in this region, uh, this region up to that region so that you can see which one satisfies the inequality or that is less than zero. That is the one that gives you a negative, okay? So you shall see the answers ranging from the minus three where X is less than minus three or the other one which is going to range in the interval of X is greater than zero, less than three over two. All right, so on separate topics, we will be working with these, top, with these inequalities so that you'll be able to understand more. But uh, for this one, I think it was a pretty direct. All you needed was to work from the consideration that you are given or from the questions that you are given, uh, I, I, at least it was going to help uh, that way. So what uh, I'm trying to say is that guys, uh, we, let's try by all means to revise as much persons, uh, do as much revisions as you can, work with person papers as much as you can. That is the only way out that we can have. All right, so that's it guys from Amazon African Motives, working on great way of mathematics till we meet again.